All right, good afternoon. It's working. All right, so uh, we are not getting too many customers. Uh, <laughs> don't know why. Um, my name is Chen Kari. I'm an associate professor in the computer science and engineering department of UT Arlington. Uh, there, I'm also directing the uh, database and the information systems research laboratory. Um, well. At UT Arlington, uh, my research uh, focuses on several areas related to big data and the data science. So that include databases, uh, data mining, information retrieval, and web data management. Okay. Um, the theme of our research is on building human-assisting and human-assisted large-scale data and information systems uh, with high usability. Okay high efficiency and uh, application for social good. And today, so these are several projects that we are currently working on. Today I'm going to talk, mainly talk about one of these projects, uh, computational journalism, okay, and data science applications in computational journalism. I have three things to confess, okay. Number one, the title of the talk mentions crowdsourcing. So if you come here for things related to crowdsourcing, I'm not really going to talk about it. So that's due to some miscommunication. Um, number two, I'm not really an expert of Python. <clears throat> I used Python 10 years ago when I was a student okay, uh, for my PhD dissertation work. And for part of the project, okay, and my main focus is on uh, tweaking the core a database engine of MySQL and PostgreSQL. Okay. And there I used the C++ and Java and so on. And in the next 10 years, I mainly focus on doing research, writing grants, writing papers, and so on. Didn't really do that much programming, especially not much in Python. But then um, started from several months ago, I would say maybe half a year ago, okay, I, I picked up Python again for several reasons. One is uh, I happen to be the chair of our publicity committee uh, of our department. And you know, part of that responsibility is I need to manage our, or oversee our uh, department website. And another aspect of it is that I get to uh, use social media and claim that part of my uh, work, okay? So that's about publicity. And I, need to, I needed to put up a, a list of areas in our department that are ranked high uh, nationally and internationally. So I got information from Microsoft Research. Uh, Microsoft Research um, uh, uh, Search API. And I used Python to uh, download their web pages and extract ranking list of uh, about 10, 20 major research areas in computer science and how these different computer science departments in this country are ranked and then figure out how UT Arlington is ranked, right? So there I used Python and used something <laughs> called a Beautiful Soup and which is fairly uh, effective for information extraction. Okay, that's number one. Number two, uh, for some of my research projects, I needed to use Python to explore uh, you know, various ideas. And number three, in this semester, when I teach data mining, um, I, I used um, NLTK and used um, um, Matplotlib, and uh, I asked my students to implement uh, decision trees and implement clustering algorithms uh, to uh, classification and to natural language processing using various uh, Python tools. And because of that, I needed to design, um, design uh, programming assignments using Python. So I, I, I got more uh, familiar with Python these days. And so that's the second thing I want to confess. Number three, um, some of the slides that show code snippets, uh, code snippets are not produced by myself. They're actually produced by my uh, students. And actually, uh, all the source code written for this project so far are done by my students. So I mentioned that uh, for acknowledging the 
a great contribution uh, from my students. Also, as a way of excusing myself if some of the slide doesn't make sense. Okay. Right? <laughs> so, uh, computational journalism. This is a collaborative project with uh, several people at uh, Duke University, Stanford, HP Labs, um, Google Research, and so on, started in 2010. Um, what is computational journalism and why computational journalism? In a very simple and short way, journalism is in crisis, traditional journalism is crisis, mainly because of uh, competition from um, internet and uh, new, type of, new types of media. So there is a reduction, significant reduction of profit and, and then eventually a reduction of uh, resources in traditional um, journalism. So the goal of computational journalism is to use uh, innovations and techniques in computation to help reporters and uh, journalists in doing uh, their tasks, in making their work more effective. Okay? And we have been focusing on uh, two aspects of computational journalism. One is fact finding and the other is uh, fact checking. And fact finding is about funding and monitoring uh, important and uh, significant fact, fact uh, when there is an event taking place in the real world. Okay? And fact checking is about discovering and verifying the truthfulness and the robustness of uh, factual claims that people make all the time. Okay? And I prepared some slides for fact finding, but I think I'll skip them. I'll uh, focus on uh, fact checking. If you are interested and if we still have some time, uh, I can come back to these slides about fact finding. Okay, so fact checking. People make claims, you know, number based claims, uh, factual claims uh, all the time, uh, especially politicians. Okay, so this is an uh, area that interests journalists and reporters uh, particularly. So this statement made by Mitt Romney in one of the presidential debates in 2012, uh, he said our Navy, uh, the Navy, U.S. Navy, is smaller than it has been since uh, 1917. Right? So the general public and the reporters are interested in knowing whether this is true or false. Right. It turns out this is not a simple and easy question. It's quite tricky. Right. This figure or chart is from one of the uh, reports related to this claim. Right. And you can see the number of battleships that U.S. Navy has starting from um, even before 1917 uh, to, uh, I think, 2012, recent years. And unsurprisingly, there is a peak uh, during World War II, and there was, you know, there was significant increase uh, during several other major wars and so on. And uh, after that, the numbers have been uh, declining. Okay? So the claim that Romney made is that the number of battleships or you know, U.S. Navy is smaller, uh, the smallest since about this point. So it's not exactly correct, but uh, it's not really far off, right? So this number is quite small uh, in this whole period. If we use this information source, then we can pretty much say that what he said is true. Uh, however, uh, you know, we need to realize that you cannot really compare the battleships 100 years ago with nowadays battleship, right? So even though the number of battleship is smaller, it doesn't mean the U.S. Navy is smaller. So that's actually the opinion of experts. Um, um, you know, when when one uh, fact-checking website, uh, Polit Fact, checked with these experts, and the consensus is that this claim is pretty much false. Okay, it's invalid. And so this is what their website put up, uh, you know, uh, fire, 
a pen's on fire, so that means it's significantly false. Okay. Uh, there are several existing fact-checking projects. Uh, this one I just mentioned perhaps is the most well-known uh, policy fact, and there are several others. Uh, journalists and reporters, they spend a lot of time uh, doing this, okay, checking these claims that people make in um, campaigns, in debates, in interviews, in news articles, and so on. Okay. And what we want to achieve, so I gave this project the name of Claim Busters. This is just something that I came up yesterday. Right? So um, it's not really a permanent name that we will use. But anyways, the goal is to automate fact-checking process. Uh, imagining that we get claims from all kinds of text source, uh, speeches, debates, interviews, social media, and news. And we will classify sentences and statements and rank them based on how likely they are factual claims and how important their topics are, okay? And or maybe how likely they are false. Uh, so we'll produce a ranked list of factual claims. And then journalists can go ahead, look at this list, and spend their time on the more important ones or the highly ranked ones. Okay? But of course, we can also develop automatic algorithms to do fact-checking uh, automatically uh, or part, partly automatically. Okay? And uh, this, can be, you know, this can even empower the crowd in doing fact-checking. For instance, we can ask Twitter users uh, whether you believe this claim is true or not. If we can get opinion, if we can collect opinions from a large number of people, then that can, can tell something about these claims. Okay? And we have a plan of deploying some service for uh, the election that is coming up next year. Right? And you know, if this can be uh, uh, accurate, if our ranking and classification algorithm can be accurate, that will help uh, reporters and journalists a lot and help the general public a lot. I'm going to talk about the progress that we have made uh, so far, right? Many about our classification models for funding checkworthy factual statements. And we had, we had, also, we had also made some um, uh, preliminary uh, efforts on using crowdsourcing, particularly using Twitter, to, to check factual claims. But um, I will not talk more about it. Maybe this is the only thing related to crowdsourcing today. <laughs> Um, by the way, if you have any questions, just uh, interrupt me and uh, ask me. Okay. So here's the problem we are looking at. We want to classify factual claims. And at this moment, we are using one data set, which is um, presidential debates uh, transcripts. And these transcripts can uh, be obtained from various sources. This is one of such source, right? So there were um, uh, 13 de uh, 30 debates for election, uh, 11 elections in history. So, um, so the earliest debates were in 1960, and then it stopped for a while. And then uh, starting from 1970, we have been uh, uh, constantly having presidential debates for every election. Okay, so there are totally 30 debates, and every debate, of course, uh, involves two speakers, two candidates. Um, there are about 20,000 sentences made by these candidates in all the presidential debates, and we have removed the very short ones, those having less than five words were not considered part of the data set. So uh, overall, there are, I think, about 40K thousand sentences, you know, very short ones, and the sentences made by moderators of debates. OK, so this is our data set. And we want to classify each sentence into one of the three classes. OK, and are you all familiar with machine learning and the notion of classification? Can, can you raise your hands? OK. so. That's good, so that makes my uh, job much easier. So these are the three classes. <clears throat> There's no factual claim in this sentence, OK? I'm not showing the sentence here. I'll show uh, one specific sentence later. 
Right? But this is a question we will ask. Uh, will the general public be interested in knowing whether part of this sentence is true or false? Right? So that is the um, prediction we want to make. That is the class label we want to give to each sentence. And there are three possible labels. Uh, no factual claim, uh, a sentence containing unimportant factual claim, and a sentence containing uh, important factual claim. So these are examples of sentences for these three different classes. Right? So these are important ones. These are unimportant ones. Uh, you know, we spend less on military trade than any time in our history. This is pretty much similar to what Mitt Romney made. And you know, I was in Iowa yesterday. That's a factual claim, but perhaps not so interesting or important for the public to check. And these are opinions and questions and declarations. They are not truly um, factual claims, right? So I will be tough on crime, right? So that's not really factual. Um, our plan is to reduce tax rate by 10%. So that's a plan that we will execute, but it's not fact. Um, this is how we collect our ground truth data. So we have set up a website, okay? And this is one sentence among the 20K sentences. So we will show uh, these sentences to our participants and ask our participants to label all these sentences. They also get a chance to see the context of this, like the five sentences before this. Right? And they also have the option of skipping uh, if they are not confident uh, in giving a label to the sentence. And they can also have a, a chance to modify uh, their labeling. Okay, um, our goal is to get each sentence uh, labeled by two participants. Okay, and we are still doing that. We have accomplished about 80% of our uh, job. Okay, um, the ground truth will include the, you know, a sentence only if the sentence is labeled consistently uh, by the two participants. Okay, so if both say that this is important, then we say. Yes, uh, I consider that to be the ground truth label for that sentence. If they disagree, then we, we will not use that uh, in training our model and in testing our model. Right. Uh, so, well, this is how we use Python in this project. Okay, we use NLTK, which is a Python-based natural language toolkit for um, getting structured data out of the debate transcript files for uh, tokenizing the sentences and for um, getting part of speech tags out of the sentence. Okay. And we store um, extractive features of sentences into MySQL database using something else in you know, other package in Python. We use matplotlib to, to plot our classified performance, which we will show uh, we use Alchemy API um, to extract features for each sentence. Okay, so these are the features, these are the input to our uh, classification models. The features include keywords, of course, part of speech tags, sentiments of sentences, entities in sentences. Okay, and you know the concepts that these uh, entities about, and furthermore, taxonomy of um, topic uh, of the sentences. And we use scikit-learn to build our classification models. So I'll give you some more details about how we do each of these. So this is a code snippet of using NLTK to do part of speech tagging and to do tokenization, of course, before even doing that. Right? So this is one very simple sentence. Okay, um, we can use NLTK to do tokenization and then uh, uh, PRS tagging. And this is a result. Uh, the tags we are getting for that sentence. If you were here in the last session, then you have seen something similar. Okay. Um, so, for instance, tax is a noun and policy is a noun. Okay, and is is a verb and bad is adjectives and so on. Right. So these become the features of this sentence. So 
in this particular case, we have one, two, we have how many terms? Yeah, we have nine uh, features related to POS tagging that will become input to our uh, classification model. This is how we do uh, sentiment analysis using uh, Alchemy API. Right? So it's really simple. Uh, the sentence as the input uh, text is just to say that this is in textual format uh, instead of HTML and so on. Right? So other options can be HTML, um, uh, um, maybe JSON, I'm not exactly sure. Okay? And this is how we get uh, the sentiment and we can show, uh, we can print out the sen uh, sentiment for the sentence. It's negative for sure, right? So uh, it's fairly negative. So this is a, a high negative value. And this is how we extract named entities from sentences using Alchemy API, okay? Uh, so for that sentence, okay, what you are seeing is uh, the text policy, this phrase is a named entity, right? It's a named entity of this type, a field of terminology. Basically, it's a terminology in a particular field, okay? And it has a relevance score to the sentences, 0 0.33 relevant to the whole sentence. And we are also getting the uh, uh, sentiment out of it. Uh, so basically for each entity in a sentence, we can get uh, the sentiment score of it, whether it's positive or negative, right? So this is different from the whole, ten whole sentence's sentiment. But in this case, in this particular example, since it's short, uh, they become the same. Okay. And this is how we get the concepts, right? So name the entity is for finding whether a sentence has entities that are people, organization, or, or, or places, and so on. But it doesn't say which particular person it is, right? And concept is to say that that particular term refers to this real world entity that we know about, right? Let's say there is a particular uh, Wikipedia entry for LeBron James, and then the concept will say uh, this term, LeBron, refers to that Wikipedia entry. Right, so that's different from uh, named entity uh, recognition. So this is the output of that simple sentence. Uh, once again, uh, this, this was the sentence we looked at. The text policy for the middle clause is bad. Right? Okay, so we see middle clause and we see social clause and they have different relevant scores. Middle class is more relevant than social class to the sentence. And middle class has a particular meaning. It refers to uh, this real world entity in DBpedia, in Freebase, and in OpenCYC. I don't know if I've heard of any of these. So all of them are knowledge bases and taxonomies similar to Wikipedia, right? DBpedia is extracted from Wikipedia. And Freebase is a community constructed uh, um, um, collaborative knowledge base instead of encyclopedia. And OpenCYC is some similar, you know, some project similar to Freebase, but was done much earlier than Freebase. So anyways, this way we, we build connection uh, between middle class as a phrase uh, with particular concepts in these knowledge bases. So these concepts become the input, become the features to our class classification model. Okay. And finally, we find taxonomies of these, um, of you know, topic taxonomy of the sentence. Uh, so that particular sentence is related to law, government, and politics, and further related to legal issues, and further related to legislation. Right. So Alchemy API, they have a predefined taxonomy of topic, uh, topics. Right? So law and government and politics, this is one of the root topics in their taxonomy. And under that, you, you know, we see some subcategories. And legal issues is one of them, not really showing it's below this. And then legislation is further below uh, legal issues. Right? So these 
three things become features of that sentence will become input to our classification model. And then we use scikit-learn to build classification models. Right? We have, so far, we have tried three uh, machine learning algorithms. Nibius classifier support vector machine with linear SVC, right? So that use a linear kernel um, for multi-class classification. And then we also use random forest classifier. And particularly, we use 200 trees in random forest. And this is our setup. Right? So we have three classes, a sentence being belonging, a sentence belonging to one of these three classes, right? NFS, non-factual claim, no, that means not important, and yes means important factual claim. And we use five categories of features, okay? So these are the ones I mentioned. Keywords, of course, entity types, okay? Uh, pure tags, concept and taxonomy. Uh, and then we tried five combinations of features. So basically, we consider keywords to be basic, and then we start to add uh, into the stack of features that we want to use. So we add uh, pure S tags upon keywords and then further include entity types and further include uh, concepts and taxonomy. So there are five combinations. And we always use sentiment and uh, the length of the sentences. So they're not mentioned as uh, these five categories of features, but they are always used in our classification model. Uh, we have uh, 1,500 sentences uh, in our ground truth so far. So remember, these are the sentences that have been labeled by two participants, and they agree on, the, on their labels. Okay. Uh, so our, uh, we have tried uh, fourfold cross-validation. Right? And the ratio between training and test data is three versus one. Right? So since you are familiar with machine learning, I'm not going to explain what this means. Okay. And this is a you know, uh, snippet again uh, of how we do these. Right? So we have data and multiple columns. You know, each column corresponds, corresponds to a feature. So each row in data is one sentence, essentially. We do not want to include the last column because that's the ground truth, that's the label of each sentence. Right? The rest of the columns are the features we want to use. And this is how we, uh, uh, this is our ratio between uh, training and test data. You know, 75% of the sentences will become training, and the, 20, the remaining 25% belong to test data. Right, so we use random numbers to decide each, which sentence should be put in training data, which, should be, uh, which sentence should be included in test data. Right, so this is how we partition the data. And then uh, these two, uh, trend verdict and uh, test verdict, these two uh, lists, they are, they are the labels, the ground truth labels of sentences. And if we use scikit-learn, it's truly simple to, to get a classifier, right? Road, random forest classifier, that's the function we use for, for doing random forest. And this is number of trees that we want to use in random forest. And this is uh, Nivea's classifier, and this is SVM classifier. Um, now, if you just use that to replace this, you get a different model. Use that to replace that, you get a different model. And you just say that we want to use train as the training data, and this as the uh, ground truth label. And a model will be created. And then you predict uh, uh, using that model to predict for every sentence in test data, you get the prediction. Uh, that is how you do a uh, uh, handout uh, by partitioning uh, data into train and the test data subsets. And this is how we do cross-validation. Right? So um, there, there is a particular function called a cross-well score in scikit-learn for, for you to do that. And so these are some results. Uh, as I said, this is fairly uh, preliminary. Our goal is to get all 20,000 sentences labeled, and hopefully that will allow us to get better classifiers. And we also explore more uh, uh, different types of classification models and further tune these classification models. But anyways, these are the 
uh, results we have so far. And this is on precision, right? So I guess everybody understands the concept of precision. If we label a sentence as uh, important, uh, the percentage of uh, sentences labeled as, labeled as important that are truly important, right? So that is precision. And these are the results for three different classifiers, SVM, RFC, and uh, Naivius classifier. And you have, you know, for each classifier, you see three group, uh, five groups of bars for five different combinations of features. And then, you know, we have the precision on three different categories of sentences, right? It turns out no is the most challenging category of sentences. So that's natural, right? Because we have uh, NFS, which means that sentence doesn't have factual claim at all. And then yes, which means it has an important factual claim. And in the middle, it's no. So it's easy to get confused. And it, you know, so that's the ambiguous case. It's relatively uh, less challenging to get a sentence in NFS and yes correctly labeled. Right. So, so the performance on no, this category, is not really impressive or satisfactory. So that will be one area that we want to focus on in improving. Overall, it looks like RFS, okay, uh, RFS and, and SVM have better performance than NIBS classifier, okay, um, um, in terms of a precision. And RFS seems to be, uh, seems to outperform SVM as well, okay. If you look at the no classes, okay, and RFS is better. And this is recall, so that's a different measure, right? So out of all those sentences that are truly yes, how many are labeled by our algorithm or models as yes, okay? And you know, that will be the red bar, and we do that for the three uh, classes uh, corresponding to the red, the green, and the blue bar. And here we see some interesting uh, results. MVC turns out to be uh, effective in terms of recall, so it's find, it finds a lot of um, it find, finds a lot of less important factual claims. Okay, uh, you know, in terms of that, it's better than SVM and RFC. Uh, but of course, it suffers on the other two categories, NFS and YES. Okay, and RFS, RFC random forest is doesn't appear to be effective uh, on the no class. Okay, SVM uh, is stronger than RFC uh, in terms of that. And overall, we combine precision recall, uh, we, we get F measure, so this is a measure for combining precision recall. It is essentially the harmonic mean of precision recall, right? And we, we see still uh, FC is the best for YES and NFS in terms of uh, F measure, okay? Um, but it's not really strong on no class, and MVC is the best on no class. But MVC really suffers on the other two categories of sentences. Okay. And here is, um, uh, you know, this, this is the point that I want to do some advertisement and want to get some help from you. I was hoping to get a larger audience, okay, but uh, you know, any help is help to us. Um, you know, if you can, you know, go to our Data collection website, create account, uh, and you know, th this is the short URL, and this this is the uh, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, the you you some code, okay? Um, it, you can go to our uh, survey website and create account, and basically, you know, this this will be one ten sentence that you label, and here you will see how many sentences you have labeled, and we even have a leaderboard. Uh, based on our ground truth data, we'll rank users based on the quality of their uh, labels. And there's a price associated with this. Right? So each sentence you labeled uh, will give you an entry in our random drawing of price. So you know, we have some grand price, which is $200. We have some second price, which is $100. Right? And if we get enough participants, we, we plan to uh, give more price. Okay? So, you know, I think it's really fun. I, I even participate and label some sentences. And it's really interesting and educational to see 
how challenging it can be in telling whether a sentence has a factual claim and whether it's, uh, it's important or not. Okay. And you know, as I said, this is a collaborative project with a lot of people uh, from several organizations, uh, Duke, uh, Stanford, Columbia, um, uh, Chinese Academy of Science, and Google Research. Um, uh, these are uh, graduate students in my group that, uh, that have contribute, contributed to this project so far. Right? So really, the, you know, the, the programs, uh, the coding is done by them, uh, particularly by Naimo Hassan. Okay? Uh, and you know, our project funded by NSF, um, National Science Foundation, and HP Labs, uh, the Chinese, uh, uh, Chinese version of NSF, basically, and uh, UT Arlington as well. So this is some disclaimer that we always need to give to you. Right? So this is not, whatever I say is not the opinion of these funding agencies. And that's my URL. That's my home page and my email and my group's homepage, and you know, if you can help us, that would be truly appreciated. And thank you very much for listening.